Celebrity, true or false? You can't handle the truth. There you go. You ready for it? Does that set the stage for you? Come yeah, on. my God, I am so amped. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, by the way, I watched that clip yes. of Jack Nicholson uh, in Few Good Men yes. to prepare for a scene in Welcome <laughs> to Chippendale, streaming now on Hulu, the first is three that, episodes. Is that, that's true? Yeah. There's which, a, which match? Which uh, scene did you do? There's a big moment in that show that I don't want to... It's, it's okay. sort of later, you know, after a lot of bad stuff has happened. Now the FBI is involved. And there's a moment where it's like, is he going to get caught or not? Uh -huh. And I was like, I want to have like a moment here that's like the Jack Nicholson moment that oh. like he gets angry and sort of righteously in his own way exposes everything he's done. And I wanted that kind of moment in our show. Okay. Uh, and so I watched that clip a bunch of times. It's a really, it's a great acting job. You I think? Mean, I mean, we've we've had so many. Uh, we've had Rob Reiner on here. We've had Kevin Bacon on here. Kevin Pollock on here, and they each have their own version of telling the story of how Jack did it. What about twenty times? He 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 was the one who did it off camera for all the other actors, and he did it the same every single time. Really? True story. That's, That's true. I've thought about that because that scene, you know, as an actor, you're like, wow, that scene is like a twenty-five minute long scene. Do you shoot it all in one day? Do you break it up? How do you they do it? They did break it up, and he did it at, when when he was off camera and everyone was reacting to him. He did it. He's he did it full speed. Full speed every single time. Yeah. And Rob Reiner said, "You want to take some time off?" And he did the imitation of Nicholson saying, "You don't understand. I love to act." So really? Said, yeah, it's great stuff. Uh, let's. That, that's now. The, that's now the bar we're going to leap over right here with the celebrity true or false with Camille Nanjiani. <laughs> First one, true or false, Camille? You have a fear of horses. True or false? I don't really have a fear of horses. I yes. wouldn't say. I think I am as scared of them as any, any human being would be. It's like a car that can think. You know. It's, <laughs> I mean, that is in itself a terrifying thing. With emissions? They have emissions I as mean, well? they have emissions. You've seen okay. the emissions. They may not ruin the atmosphere, but they ruin, you know, where they, write, where they were just now. I had to write horses for a movie, and I realized, like, oh, this is like I'm trying to control a car, except it has its own brain. <laughs> um, so that was scary to me, but I'm not, I wouldn't okay. say. Okay. But you know, when you're sitting on a horse, it's like you're, it's like a lot of muscle. Like yeah. it's a very. And, and what happens without controlling it? That's the way I feel about skiing. Like you, how do you stop when you're going downhill? Right. That's Man what... versus gravity. Gravity is always going to win. <laughs> you, see... you ski long enough, you're going to regret it. All right. So ish, true ish, false ish. It's right in the between. Like if there was a horse over there, I'm yeah. not going to like start freaking out. Okay, good. But if you're like, would you get on the horse? I'd be like, can you find someone else? Understood. Uh, <laughs> next one, true or false, Camille? Uh, you decided to start a stand-up career after you were impressed by Hugh Grant's performance in Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you're really painting me as like sort of this coward because I'm no. like, I don't. But it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> why? I mean, why am I painting you as a coward? You're, you're inspired by it. Is well, I'm sort of like, oh, you know, you're like, I, I really was inspired by Hugh Grant. His, he does this best man speech in it. And yes. it's really, really fantastic. His, and I realized years later that the, my first five years of doing stand up on stage were just my impression of Hugh Grant. In four weddings and a funeral. Is that right? Yeah, because, you know, I was like, he's handsome, he has great hair, he's funny, women love him. It was everything I wasn't, you know? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, Hugh Grant was, I, I still, by the way, you know, I've been a friend of Hugh Grant's forever, and now everyone's like, oh my God, Hugh Grant's an amazing actor. He's, he's got all this range. And I'm like, yeah, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he's so good. Next one, a true or false, you pitched Judd Apatow, a film called Ghost Witch, but wound up <laughs> adapting your real-life love story that became the Oscar-nominated screenplay, The Big Sick. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, the movie was not called Ghost Witch. Okay. It was about a ghost <laughs> witch. So that is, oh. I'll okay. say it's true. I was like, it's about it's about a ghost who's also a witch. She was a witch, then she dies, and she comes back as a ghost, and she's still a witch. And he said, do you have any other ideas? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, well, you know, my wife was, my, my girlfriend at the time was in a coma, and that's how I met her family. And, and, you know, we fell in love sort of like over this crazy, tragic event. And he said, okay, yeah, let's try that. And if that doesn't work, we'll go back to Ghost Witch. And uh, <laughs> Ghost Witch never happened. And, and it's amazing how things come about, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, that I'm, is incredible. I'm so grateful to Judd for, you know, giving me that chance when, when kind of nobody else would. And also recognizing he was like, you got to write about stuff that means something to you. It's got to be personal. It can't just be like a great idea you had that, that's clever. It's got to really come from like inside you. 
Uh, and that's a lesson I still try and, you know, carry with me in everything I do. Sure. Next one for you here. True or false, you auditioned for two roles in Silicon Valley. Didn't get them, but Mike Judge created a whole new character for you anyway. That's that's absolutely true. So I auditioned for yes. uh, Ehrlich, who's played by T.J. Miller, yep. and this character named Big Head, who is played by Josh <laughs> Brenner, who's not in that picture. I was so nervous for this audition. I've been a big fan of, you know, Mike Judge. It's like, oh, Beavis and Butthead. Have you watched much Beavis and Butthead? Uh, not lately. It's you know, there's fun. new Beavis and Butthead on, I think it's on Paramount. It's yeah. just as good as uh, the original. I did not know that. It's I got to so get good. in on that because that is brilliant. Office Space as well. Office Space. You know, these movies like, you know, these shows loom so large for me. So they were yes. like, Mike's doing an HBO show. Would you want to audition? And I said yes, and I found out, you know, before Christmas and the audition was next year, so I had like two months to get really nervous. I went in, I read these two parts, and I thought they went well. You know, I was like, okay, that was a good audition. I did my best, and if nothing else, I get to meet Mike Judge. And they called me afterwards. They're like, we don't think you're right for this, but we're going to write you a character. And, and people say that all the time, where they're like, you're not right for this, but we'll find something. And then a few weeks later, I got a call, and they said, hey, we've written this character for you. You don't have to audition for it again. Do you want it? And I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting emotional talking about it. Um, so, yeah, they created this character for me, and I ended up doing that show with Mike for six years. That is so cool. And is it true then, too, that the math in the famous tip-to-tip -tip efficiency scene was actually checked out and verified by PhDs from Harvard? I think it might have been Stanford. But Stanford. Yes, I okay. think. I'm not sure. But, I mean, I don't think we could talk about the specifics of this scene. Because it took forever, right? It didn't, to uh, shoot it? It, it took no? forever to shoot it, but, I mean, the specifics of, of the scene, I think, are, like, too adult for... Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that scene is about... You don't know what that... <laughs> no, I do know what it's about. Yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Okay. I know it. Yes. So it's like... It's a very <laughs> vulgar act. Yeah. And... <laughs> Um, yes. It's like a, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to say anything. But Understood. It's, it's, a, it's a vulgar act. Welcome to Chippendales. Welcome to Chippendales. Yes. Actually, wow, there's a real, like, uh, there's Synergy. a real Synergy. theme to my career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was but, checked out by actual PhDs. Yeah, so, you know, it's about this sort of, like, somebody comes up with this vulgar idea, and then we get obsessed with doing the math of it. Yes. And so there are like all this math about doing this, this thing. And um, we did, you know, they got it checked out by real, I, th I believe it was Stanford PhDs and they came up with all the math for it. Fantastic. The hardest part of doing that scene was not laughing and also remembering what to write because <laughs> it's gobbledygook to us. You saw what that was. Yeah, I, I can't figure it out. Makes no sense. And I was, you know, stereotypically pretty good at math. <laughs> <laughs> but that's beyond my that was beyond my skill set how about spelling good too great at spelling except i throw u's into random things again because of colonialism <laughs> <laughs> look at you <laughs> A last one for you that's outside of you know uh, like honor and flavor and look at you catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free